So far, we've got it to where somebody can log in and it shows their name. But what we want is for this to give them a little welcome message and then show a form so that they can start creating budgets for themselves. So let me come down here and we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, this needs to change. All right, so we need to actually have something useful here. So let me come in here and we'll have a div uh, with a class of dashboard. That should style everything correctly as we'll need it. And I want an H1 here that says welcome back. And this will be a span with a class of accent. Inside here, then we'll simply pass in their username right here. And again, we're getting this from the loader that passes us this as one of the things that it returns right here. All right, now that's all it's returning. That's just fine. The next thing I want to do, though, is below the H1, I want to add another div, and this will have a class of grid small. This would be a grid container that has small spacing. Now inside here, I'm going to ask if any budgets exist. Now we've got a lot of different things to add in here, but they're going to be conditional based on if we already have a budget. So if they've got a saved budget already when they come back to the site in their local storage, I want to display something different. If they don't, I'll display something else. So where are we going to get that loader data? Well, you remember we got our username from here, and that's because when we hit this route, this dashboard loader loads and passes back their username. Now, in addition to a username, I also want to pass back something else. I want to pass back if they have any budgets. So now what this will do is it will load and it will say, hey, look in the local storage and see if there's anything with budgets as a key. Now, to get this down to my use loader data hook, I need to actually pass this budgets. And now I should be able to come down this way and get it from that hook. So budgets like this. Now that means I can come over here and I can say, if there are budgets, then I want to display something. And if there's not budgets, then I want to display something else. But to make this perhaps a little bit easier, let's go ahead and comment all that out. And for now, we'll just always display this form because we know there's no budgets. And then we'll worry about the structure of this in a second. Inside here, I'm going to add another div with a class of grid large on it. So this will be spaced out large in a grid container. And then once more, I'll add one more div with a class of flex large. And once we get around to the full application, I think you'll see how these things work together. But for now, let's just focus on writing this form, and that will be add budget form. Now, this doesn't yet exist, so let's come over here. And under components, let's go ahead and just create this add budget form.jsx. Let me temp this out. So we've got add budget form, and then come back over here to the dashboard. And let's just see if it'll let us auto import it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to save this, and it should show up over here, Add Budget Form. Let's make sure this got to the right place, though. And it looks like it put it up top here under Library Import, so let's put it next to our components. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of template out what we want this form to do, what we want it to look like, and then we will handle how it submits and all that as we get going. So obviously, this doesn't need to say Add Budget Form. So let's get rid of that and then give this a class name, and we're going to call this Form Wrapper. This should style everything correctly for us. And up top, we're going to give this an H2. And I'm actually going to give this a class name of H3. So that way, it semantically, can be the right uh, H tag, the right header tag, but it can be styled as a smaller tag. And then inside here, we're simply going to have it say Create Budget. And you can see that form wrapper is putting this nice styling on it, and we've got this as the H2. Now below here, we're going to have a form. And this should be from React Router DOM. For whatever reason, it's not importing it for me. That's all right. I'll come in here and say Form from React Router DOM. All right, I want to add a couple things here. First of all, a method, and let's space this out so it's a little bit easier to see. So this method will be a post. Now I'm going to use this in several pages on my site, but I always want it to submit to whatever page it's currently on. So I'm not going to add an, an action, so it'll just submit to its current page. What I'm going to do is give it a class. Now this form should have a couple of things. It should have a spot for a budget name, and then it should also have a spot for a budget amount, and then it should have a button to submit the form. So let's go ahead and do those in that order. For stylistic purposes, I'm going to group the labels and the inputs together, always in a grid uh, extra small. All right, so that will be a div with that class on it. So this will have a label, and we're going to point this to new budget, and we'll call this budget name. That means below here, I've got an input. Type of text is just fine. We're going to give this a name of new budget and an ID of new budget. That will link up the label with this input. Now remember, you do need a name equals whatever to get that form data when we submit this form. So make sure you add that as well. Let me space this out. And then next, let's add a placeholder that will say something like uh, groceries. That's an example. And then we'll make sure that this is required so they cannot submit the form without this. Now next, as a sibling to this, we're going to have another grid extra small because this will be our next label and input. This label will point to new budget amount. And the text will just say amount. And then we'll below here, we will have an input. This will be a type of number. And I want to set a step amount so that I can only move up and down by a single cent either direction. 
let's make sure we give this thing a name of new budget amount. And then same thing for the ID. We want this ID so that it will point to that label. Once again, we'll have a placeholder and this will say something like uh, $350. And then we do want this to be required. Now, just as a, like a nice ease of use thing, you know when you're typing on your phone and you're entering in numbers and it doesn't display numbers, that always really annoys me. So we can actually set an input mode. And what we'll do is decimal and that way they've got access not just to numbers, but also to the period for like the decimal point. All right, moment of truth. If I save this, we should see this pop up. Yeah, groceries are here. So I can say groceries and then like three, whatever. And if I do point one, whatever, and I start to add extra ones, if I were to submit it, it's gonna tell me it can just be increments like that. So it has to be those two decimal places. Okay, so we've got those two things set. Let's come inside the form still, but below that little grouped div. And now let's add our button. This will be a type of submit. We'll also give this a class name of button and button dark. And then for now, although we will change this in a second, we wanna span here that says create budget. We're going to add in here an icon from that hero icons pack called currency dollar icon. There we go. And it looks like it pulled it in for us. So we'll set this width to 20 like we've been doing. And let me come up top here and make sure that this is where I want it. All right, great. So now you might say, well, I know what to do. We've got this form. We're submitting it to this page. I just need to add uh, a response in the dashboard action function. So if I come over here, you can see that we've already got one right here that's going to handle this form right here. However, this is gonna take any form on the page that that's submitted. So if I come over here and I start to type and I add something, something, and I hit enter, uh-oh, undefined is not valid JSON, right? So this is the error message I get. And you can see what it's trying to do is this. However, I didn't submit that form. I submitted a different form. So how do we tell it which form we're submitting? Now, there are several different ways we can do this, but there's something that should be unique to each form we're submitting, and that is that they should have their own form data. That form data can then tell us which form we've submitted to that current page. So I'm going to show you in the next video how I set this up with different actions that are all hitting the same endpoint.